I'm going to show you a simple fix here. If you've got a mower that's smoking, this can be on a Briggs, Kohler, Kawasaki, it really doesn't matter. But the first thing you need to do is identify where the smoke is coming from. In other words, when you start the mower, is it coming out of the exhaust or is it possibly coming from somewhere else on the engine? What I'm trying to identify is when you've got smoke coming out back here, so it doesn't smoke necessarily when you first start it. But then after the exhaust system starts to warm up, it'll start smoking and it may appear to come out of there because that creates kind of a venturi effect and it'll suck the smoke out with the exhaust you'll notice when i first start it you will not see any smoke come out of the exhaust there So you could see how that started smoking back in there after it ran for a little while and it does appear that it's coming down and coming out of the exhaust but it's actually coming from behind here and you can actually see there where it's black and been leaking down on there i'm going to show you real quickly how you can fix this problem on your own mower for probably about five or ten dollars and it only takes about 10 or 15 minutes as long as you've got the tools to do it a couple of things you'll need here to make this job easier is one take your hood off what we're going to do here is pull this valve cover or rocker cover off there's four three eighths bolts in this a 10 millimeter will work it's a little big if it's all you got though a 10 millimeter should work but these are actually a 3 8 we're going to take that off this one here actually is installed from the factory with silicone around it there's no gasket on this you're going to need either a replacement gasket this is a briggs if you've got the uh, kohler courage or some of the other ones the valve covers are very similar to this the process is the same you just need to make sure you've got the right valve cover gasket for your engine you can also use this ultra black gasket maker it's a permatex product you can get this at a lot of automotive stores like autozone and places like that sometimes this is a quicker fix if you're just trying to get this done because you can run down to the auto parts store and get it i prefer to put a gasket back on it just because it's easier to pull this off if i ever need to pull this off again to adjust the valves i don't have to worry about getting all this permatex off of there something else you'll need is a flat screwdriver to kind of pry this off because it's going to be stuck on here pretty tightly and then you're going to need some kind of scraper this is just a wood chisel that i use just for scraping that off and you have to be careful not to gouge this aluminum on the head or the valve cover what i'll do next is just take a rag lay it down in here so you don't drip oil down on your exhaust system or on the ground underneath it and then take your 3 8 socket and zip these bolts out of here now it should seem like that valve cover will come right off but you have to kind of pry on a little bit to break that permatex loose it helps if you start on either the top or at one end and then just kind of fold it off the other thing we're going to do while we're in here is check the clearance on these valves hitting right here so what I'll do is just bend that down just to get that out of the way so it'll clear and you can just pull that off there all right once you get that off you're just going to take your scraper and very carefully without gouging this just scrape around that all right once you get as much of that scraped off of there with your scraper as you can just take a fine piece of sandpaper 600 grit or a piece of emery cloth and just kind of clean that up as best you can this also makes sure you got a good place for that gasket or your permatex to seal do that on both the head and on your valve cover all right once you get that all cleaned up all the way around there i know it's kind of hard to get down here on the bottom but you want to make sure that's clean all the way around there make sure your valve cover or rocker cover is clean and i'll wipe this out really well before we put it back on there but one more thing I want to show you how to do, I want to show you how to adjust these rockers or the valve clearance before we put this back together. And to do that, we're going to put this on top dead center and we're going to use a feeler gauge. Now to find the valve clearance for your engine, you want to go to Briggs or uh, Kohler's website, look up this model number, and this will give you the specs for this engine. This is model 31R907. And that'll give you the exact valve specs for this engine. Another thing too to look at here if you're curious on the code on this valve cover there on the right side. See how that starts with a 19? That means this is a 2019 engine that I'm currently working on. In the case of this engine here the valve clearances are three on the intake and five on the exhaust valve. Your intake's always the lower one. I'll show you a little trick here. If you don't have a set of feeler gauges, a simple beer can or pop can, just cut a little strip out of it. A pop can is about four thousandths of an inch. So you can just score that aluminum with a utility knife, lightly score that, and then you can tear that. And then there's your feeler gauge. We'll use that to adjust the valves on this thing.
Now to adjust the valves, Briggs recommends you remove the spark plug and they say use a screwdriver. I've actually got a small little rod I'm going to use that I'll show you here in just a minute. Spark plug actually looks pretty clean. And then you can easily turn this motor over. Instead of a screwdriver, I've just got a little rod. It's just a little straight rod. I'm going to put that straight in the spark plug hole. And then as you turn that engine over, follow the piston with your screwdriver or your rod. So then you'll see how that comes up there. That's right at top dead center. And then it's supposed to go one quarter turn past top dead center. And that's where we're at. And now both of these are loose. Now what we'll do is we'll take our feeler gauge. Your exhaust is on the top here, so that's your exhaust valve. Your intake's on the bottom, so this is your intake valve. This was about four thousandths. Fits right in there, but that makes a great feeler gauge, and you can see that's still a little loose, so we need to tighten this down. Your exhaust valve is a little bit loose too. Put a five thousandths feeler gauge in there. And you can see that's loose. So both of these valves need to be tightened down just a little bit. This nut is a 5 8 and the Torx is a T15. What you'll do here is loosen this up and then back this center little cap out so you can tighten this down. Put our feeler gauge back in here. I got it too tight right now, so we'll loosen this up just a little bit. Now again, we want 5 thousandths on this. This is 4 thousandths, so I'll back that out just a, a little bit so that's just a little bit loose. And we'll recheck this with an actual feeler gauge. But that should be about four to five thousandths right there. Spec is five thousandths. So what we're going to do, pull that out. Hold this, don't move it. And that doesn't need to be super tight. You're just locking this together with the part underneath it. We'll recheck it with this. Still loose. And then I'll put the five thousandths feeler gauge in it. And that is pretty snug. Now the bottom one here should be three. So if we use the pop can or a beer can, this needs to be really snug. So I'll loosen this up, back this center out. All that is is like a jam nut that jams against the stud to keep this from turning. So we'll put this back in the bottom here, tighten this down until it's snug, tighter than what this uh, pop can is. So that's pretty tight right there, but it's not impossible to pull it out. And then just to verify that, I'll take my 3,000th feeler gauge. Just for reference, guys, 3,000th is about the thickness of a sheet of notebook paper. So that is paper thin, literally. But that's enough to give it clearance there. Again, we're going to hold this. Don't let it move when you put your wrench on it. And tighten that center jam nut back up. Again, don't over tighten this. It just needs to be snug so it doesn't vibrate loose. And you've got your valve set. Now what I like to do is just turn the engine over once or twice. Don't leave this in here when you're turning it all the way over. Just turn that all the way over once. Get your piston back in position and just recheck them once before you put the valve cover back on. There's three thousandths right there. That should be five thousandths right there, so we're good to go. Now we can go ahead and put our valve cover back on. Now I mentioned earlier you can use Permatex or a gasket. I like to take a little bit of Permatex and do both. I'll put just a thin coat of Permatex just to hold the uh, valve cover gasket, rocker cover gasket, whatever you want to call it. And that way if you ever have to take this apart again to check valves or adjust your valves again, your gasket will come off on the valve cover and a lot of times you can get away with reusing that gasket. Just put Permatex on one side, don't stick it to the head side. Just smear that around there. If you don't want to get it on your fingers, just put gloves on. What I'll do is just take a rag and kind of wipe around the inside. You don't want any of this on the inside of the valve cover. Doesn't really matter if any oozes out around the outside, but try to get the inside cleared off. And then I'll go ahead and set my valve cover gasket back on here. Again, I'm not putting any Permatex on the engine side, just on the valve cover side. And if we follow the directions on the Permatex, you want to bolt this on loosely, and then you come back later and tighten it down. That's exactly what we're going to do. Now when you put this back on, pay attention to your OHV so all your data and everything is on the top. That will fit on there upside down. And if you put it on upside down, it ain't going to hurt a thing, other than the fact you're not going to be able to see your information here. Just get all these started. Snug these down, but we're not going to tighten them. Now, to keep a nice professional looking job, take your rag and wipe all that excess Permatex off that 
while it's still wet. While we're waiting on that to set up, we're going to put our spark plug back in. Spark plug wire back on. And once we tighten these down, we're done. I read the directions on that Permatex after I shut the camera off there, and this is dried now for one hour and it's 24 hours before it's fully cured. So I'll go ahead and snug that down. If you tighten it down too much, it'll squeeze that gasket out and damage that gasket. And we should be good. We'll get our hood back on here and try to fire this thing up. Other than the time it takes for that Permatex to set up and get your tools and everything cleaned up and put away, that's a job that can really be done in, oh, I'd say 15, 20 minutes. Anyway, hopefully that helps somebody out that's got a smoking mower out there. It is a fairly common problem. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully this will help you out on yours if you've got one that's smoking.